Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Waynesburg Effect. I'm Ryan Schwertfeger here alongside Paige Carter and Sean Mead. If you haven't watched this show before, each panelist will bring up a current event topic that has an effect on the nation, the community, or even us as college students. Now, each panelist will get an opportunity to give their opinion on the issue at hand, and you may even see us engage in a friendly debate on the topic. Now, while we all have our opinions, we do our best to make sure what we say is backed up with facts so that you, the viewer, can not only be more informed, but also capable to form your own opinions on how the topic we discuss affects you, your family, and your friends. This is The Waynesburg Effect. Welcome back to the Waynesburg Effect with our first topic of the day, Ms. Paige Carter. <clears throat> the White House has responded to an online petition that began when a transgender teenager died from suicide after being subjected to therapy meant to alter her gender identity. On Wednesday, the White House openly expressed its support banning the conversion practices. White House correspondent Valerie Jarrett noted that a federal ban on the practice, which its proponents claim can change a person's sexual orientation, would require congressional approval. She urged individual states to ban the therapy, given studies showing its potential harm to those subjected to it. Obama has taken numerous steps in the last year to bolster the rights of gays and lesbians, including signing an executive order, order barring discrimination based on sexual orientation within the federal government and federal contractors. Sean, um, there's a lot going on with the issue of homosexual rights right now, but what are your thoughts on just the constitution, constitutionality of, of this um, support that the administration has um, openly expressed? I almost want to say that I want the president uh, to step away and Congress to step away from this subject in general. Because uh, basically what they're doing is by telling them, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that, that limits the jobs that are created through therapy and stuff like that. People are getting trained to be therapists and whatnot. And by telling them, hey, they can't go in this specific field of therapy, um, they can't continue doing that. Uh, it's also like similar to the whole situation where they had the churches. They were forcing churches to do LGBT marriages. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily line up with the ideas of the churches. So by forcing this, by having each state, obviously they're loopholing the system right now by mm -hmm. not doing it on a nationwide level, but doing it by a state level. They're basically loopholing the system. Yeah, well, there's no way it would pass in Congress. No, there's with the no majority way. being Republican right now. So mm -hmm. I think that's what they were trying to do by making an official statement state by state because they knew that Congress does not have yeah. their backs on this. And you said that it was a girl, right? I'm assuming a teenage girl? Yeah. Well, who's forcing her to go there? Her parents, right? So it's not the people's choice that they're going to this therapist. It's most likely the parents are saying, oh, mm -hmm. hey, your gender is different than what you came out as a child. You need that fixed. She's sending, or the parents are sending the child to the therapist. So it's not even the child who's going there's choice to be there mm -hmm. so. yeah and um, Ryan he just hit on something so the parents obviously are the ones taking these their children to these conversion therapists but the law wants to outlaw seeks to outlaw 18 and under so they don't want this to be available for minorities what do you think of that uh, well, I think it needs to work a little bit of both. I mean, obviously, if it's still 18 and under, the child <clears> is still a minor because under 18 years old. However, I think that if it's in that case that the child should have some sort of say, I mean, I don't think that they should be, I'm sorry, you know, that's the way you feel, you shouldn't have any input at all. Uh, the, but the question is, of course, as most things are with government and laws like this, what is the fine line and the fine balance between getting a little bit of what uh, the, you know, the child thinks that they want or need having to make sure that their voices are heard well at the same time they're still a minor under the care of their parents so then what is you know what do the parents want to see and I think that's the really difficult kind of angle to take mm. up and I would say that if they could find some sort of compromise in terms of maybe having a little bit of the input coming from the, the, the yeah. child and some input coming from the parents 
And I, I don't know if they would, you know, make it 60-40 or, you know, yes to some things, we won't do other things. I don't know exactly how that would work out. But I think it's important that all the parties involved, even if they can't agree on the same thing, at least try and work together to find some sort of middle ground. Yeah, and I think that um, I, I heard a CNN reporter say something that really struck, um, struck a chord with me. She said that is it discriminating to even the homosexual community to, to outlaw this entire version of therapy because what if that's something a homosexual wanted to seek out? So um, there, there are a lot of ramifications with this. Uh, there would be a lot of backlash in different ways. And it just seems like, like you were saying, there's no, there's no way to please both sides. And if there was, it would be very complicated. So um, trying to just to get through all of that really makes us a very tricky law. And yeah, if it was on a congressional level, we would really be, we would really be seeing a lot in the news circuit. But and, and, and going off of that really quickly, uh, you know, I think you know, obviously nothing is going to be passed at the federal level on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if it would be right for it to be banned at the federal level. Uh, plus, as you just alluded to, the conservatives and the Republicans, they're more traditional values folks, and they wouldn't, you know, their constituents wouldn't probably like that if they approve mm -hmm. something along those lines. Uh, however, I think that if it's something that maybe the states want to take up, not you know, I have my own personal opinion on what I think should or should not be done, but I think if something's going to be done, it should be the states deciding if they want to do that. Uh, I believe California and New Jersey are two, I'm not sure if there's any other states that have done that. Um, but I think that if that's, if that's something that the states want to do, then the states can approve that. But my personal opinion is I think that whether you agree it's right or wrong, you have to give people the choice. You shouldn't, as Sean, as Sean alluded to, say you can't do it at all. But at the same time, I don't think it should be state mandated that you have to go or you don't, or you don't have that option. Yeah. Let them decide if that's mm. something they want to do, they should have the ability to go and get that treatment if they think that's going to work for them. I like the uh, point Paige brought up with the whole age of a minor and stuff like that. You're sending kids that might be 8, 12, 14 years old who might not know exactly what's going on. They're putting, in, putting mm. them in a room with a therapist. Like, what's that gonna, What kind of impact is that going to leave on a child? Is it going to leave like a positive impact or are they gonna like necessar not necessarily have nightmares but think of the impact as a really negative outcome from it. And parents, they always say parents want what's best for a child but that isn't necessarily always true. So. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I just think that it's uh, um, bold and valiant that the people are being heard through the whitehouse.gov website. I really like the petition um, page that this was filed on. So um, just keep that in mind if you guys want to petition anything. You yeah. can go on. Well, to... there was a petition a while back to like deport Justin Bieber too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh. some things on that website aren't always the best. Yeah, so. that's true. Well, we're going to have to see, I guess, if any other states decide to take any action or just in general what's going on. There's a lot of things in the news going on with the LGBT community. So we'll see if anything develops with that. Now, coming up after the break, we're going to focus on the 2016 presidential race. So we'll be right back after this. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. It seemed that one by one, people were announcing their intentions to run for the highest elected position in the United States. Now, as of this recording, the last person to formally announce their candidacy was Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio, who announced he was running for the GOP nod on April 13th. It does appear other candidates may be stepping forward or even possibly stepping back in the near future. And of course, do not discount the possibility that someone unexpected decides to delve into this 2016 election. So I took a quick look after now a bunch of candidates uh, have announced, and I took a look at the Real Clear Politics Average, which is uh, they take a bunch of the most recent polls, put them together, and they figure out what about the averages of how they're polling. So for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton is at 59.8%. Elizabeth Warren, who's the senator from uh, Massachusetts, who has come out and said that they're not, she's not going to run, she's at 12.2%. Vice President Joe Biden is at 11.5%. Uh, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders is at 4.3%. Uh, 
uh, Martin O'Malley, former uh, Maryland governor, is at 1.2, and a former Virginia senator, Jim Webb, is at 1.2 percent. So first, I guess I'll start with the Democratic side, and I'll go to Sean. I'll ask you first. What the heck? <laughs> uh, so Sean, I want to ask Adam. You know, Hillary Clinton's the only one on the Democrat side to officially announce that mm -hmm. she's running for president. Do you think she's a good choice for the Democrats, or would you like to see at least some other people getting into the race? And if so, any of the people that I mentioned? I'm a big Hillary Clinton fan, not going to lie. Uh, I was a big Bill Clinton fan now, looking back on his presidency, his uh, with the economy and whatnot during Bill's uh, campaign. But I'd love to see Hillary Clinton in office. She's been working hard over the past few years. I know a lot of people are saying if she would have won, uh, would have run 2012 would have been her time. But... Now is as good a time as uh, ever for her to run. I know, I know we talked about recently on the show a couple weeks ago, our, our last episode, we talked about Hillary Clinton and the whole email scandal that was going on, about her not using a government email. Um, she was using her own personal email for government-related things. So that, it's kind of funny if you look at it, that came up right as she started the campaign for presidency, right, as she, uh, right before she announced she was running. Do you think that's going to have an impact? I, maybe causing other candidates to say she can't I run I feel for like, president? yes, that's going to, uh, other, more or less, other candidates are going to use that to their advantage. They're going to point out, hey, she done goofed. Let's use it to our advantage. But uh, as for other candidates who I'd like to see run, uh, Chris Christie, governor of New Jersey, I'd like to see him run. Uh, and back during the 2012 election, I was a big fan of the third party libertarian candidate, Gary Johnson. Uh, I don't believe he's announced to run yet, but my views and his views align perfectly almost. And then he, he was also a pretty exciting guy. He does a lot of triathlons, does a lot for the community. So I'd like to see him run as well. All right, now I'm going to turn to Ms. Carter to uh, ask you some questions about the Republican candidates. So we've heard more Republican candidates come out than uh, only, that Hillary Clinton's the only one thus far. So I took a look at the different candidates running there. Uh, Jeb Bush, uh, is at 16.5%. Scott Walker, governor of Wisconsin, is at 15.3%. Ted Cruz, who announced he's running for president, he's at 10.5%. Rand Paul, also one who has announced, 9.8%. Uh, uh, ben Carson, he's at 9%. Uh, he hasn't officially said he's running for president, but it looks like an announcement could be coming in a few weeks on that. Uh, former uh, Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee is at 8.5%. Marco Rubio, who also announced, uh, is at 7.3%. Chris Christie, who, uh, Governor of New Jersey, who Sean alluded to earlier, he's at 5.5. Uh, um, uh, Rick Perry, former Governor of Texas, is at 2.8. Rick Santorum, former uh, Senator from Pennsylvania, is at 1.7. And then there's a few other people who are uh, below that. Is there anyone that you like that has decided to run so far in the Republican presidential line? And do you think any of the people who have announced, which is Cruz, Paul, yeah. or Rubio, do any of them have a shot? Well, I'm a big Rand Paul supporter. I, I think he's really smart in, in claiming the Republican Party versus his dad, who was of the Libertarian platform. I think that was very wise because those votes count so much more now in the primaries. But I do think that the Republicans are going to give him a hard time. I think that um, they really tried to blackball Ron Paul because he was stealing Republican votes in the past election. And I don't know how that's going to sit with them and Rand. Um, it would not surprise me if this um, presidential election was old money, so Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton. I'm neither a fan of either, honestly. I think Hillary has too much of a um, controversial past to really to break way in this, in this election. I would love to see a female president. I'm just not sure I'd love to see her as a female president. But don't get me wrong, I, I will be holding out for that. Um, and Jeb Bush, I just, I don't think he is running a good campaign thus far, which I think a lot of um, politicians fall into is just sloppy, um, sloppy speeches, you know, slips, what, what have you. But um, Ted Cruz, he does have the uh, government shutdown on his side, um, which is a very um, divided, seminal issue. Some people really liked that, some people didn't. Um, I'm, I'm still um, holding out for him, though. I'm not sure how I feel about him. But um, I do think that Ben Carson will run. And I'm just more interested in who, who is going to go up against Hillary Clinton. And I'm not sure. Like, who, who do you think is going to go up against her, Ryan? You know, I'm not so sure. I always yeah, hate, when people, just... well, I, I hate when people ask because I always like to say, if you look back at 2008, everyone said it was going to be Hillary Clinton against Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. And we ended up with John McCain and an unknown senator 
uh, now President Barack Obama from Illinois. So I think you know anything's possible. I mean, 2012 was a bit more predictable. I think most people thought it was mm -hmm. going to be Mitt Romney, and they were right. Yeah. However, I don't think anyone predicted that there was going to be six different like front runners all running for president at the same time. Yeah. Um, however, one thing I, I do want to ask, which is more prevalent that we see in this, at least the proposed field, I'll call it that, for this coming election than we really did, I would say even maybe in 2012, is that we have this divide, especially on the Republican side thus far, of the people who are, of, like I said, the old guard in terms of um, um, you have Jeb Bush, you have Carson, even Carly Fiorina, who are all a little bit older, and then you have some of the new blood with Ted Cruz, Scott Which we Walker, need. Rand we Paul. Need the new blood. I, and, that, and that's yeah, what I want to really try and ask the both of you. Yeah. I mean, do you think, you know, obviously, you know, no one our age can run for president, you have to be yeah. at least 35. But do you think it's America is ready for a younger president, almost kind of going back to like when JFK was yeah. going for, do we need a younger president? Or especially in the kind of situation in the times that we have now, yeah. do we need someone a little bit older with more experience? I almost, we'll go to Sean. I almost like that whole uh, new uh, younger outlook because like JFK, he, was, he, he, could, he had potential to be a great president if things didn't go the way they did. But looking at uh, what Hillary Clinton said in a, uh, I quote, I'm running for president because I think that Americans and their families need a champion, and I want to be that champion, uh, Clinton said this past Tuesday. Uh, she wants to stand up to fight for the people uh, so that they cannot just get by, but she wants them to get ahead and stay ahead. So I really like that aspect of what she's campaigning with. She wants people, sure, oh, you're well off now, but she wants you to be well off on the f in the future. She wants you to get better. Yeah, I'm just not sure what that would mean, what, what would have to happen for that to come to be. Um, she's really not come, th one thing I really struggle with Hillary, Hillary is that she hasn't come forward with a very strong policy yeah. that she, um, she's really passionate about. I mean, I, I do like the platform mm. of fighting for the people, but what, what people is she fighting for? I mean, you can only go so far with the partisanship and everything inside of it, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But um, I do think that as time goes on, she'll reveal that more and more. And hopefully she can run a better campaign than she did last time. But um, I do see how the Republicans are really fighting for the seat. I mean, we only have one Democratic um, nominee so far, but mm -hmm. so many Republicans on everyone's radar. It just really is keeping me guessing as to what's going on with the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. So before we split off, just to make sure we at least I have a, con a consensus, do we, do we think that someone older would be better or someone younger? Uh, let's go with newer. If no one opposes Hillary uh, democratically, uh, then younger. I think we need a young Republican, and the jury is still out for me on the Democrats. All right, so we'll have to see what generation are we going to get uh, the uh, Generation X, or are we still going to go with someone from mm -hmm. the Baby Boomers? We'll find out. But when we return from break, Sean Mead is going to discuss the possibility of a nuclear Iran. So we'll find about that right after this. You're doing great. Let's just, we're going to try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to seat. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Welcome back to The Waynesburg Effect. A framework nuclear agreement recently announced between world powers and Iran sets the stage for Congress and foreign nations to try and change or kill a final deal. Negotiators now have until June 30th to fill in the critical details to assure Iran that it will get the relief from the sanctions placed on the country as soon as possible. While guaranteeing that Iran won't develop a nuclear weapon, Several members of Congress have wanted to make sure that they have a say in a possible deal with Iran. President Obama has pledged to sign a compromisable bill giving Congress the voice that it wants. Now, guys, uh, Iran currently is stating that it is using the uranium it has stockpiled to do nuclear power plants and whatnot. Now, Ryan, would it be smart for us, what happens is we, in the case that the bill doesn't go through. President Obama wants to send people to Iran to check out these so-called nuclear power plants that's using this uranium for. 
Do you think it would be a smart plan for us as Americans to send people over to Iran to check out these nuclear power plants? Well, the people that would be sent over would be from the UN's okay. uh, Regulatory Atomic Energy Agency. I believe that's the IAEA. I have to double, double check me on that. Um, but essentially, they would send them over, and if they got any, a th an all clear mm -hmm. from them, then that would be the sign to the United States that they're using what they have correctly, and then they would be able to lift the sanctions. Iran, on the other hand, they want to say, we want you to lift the sanctions right now first, then you can do all the checks, mm -hmm. which a lot of Republicans don't like because they figure, well, then if we just lift the sanctions on them, okay. then all of a sudden they'll you know, be able to use that time to continue to make nuclear weapons, mm -hmm. and then they you know, won't really follow through on the rest of, of the deal. So what they're saying is, is we want to see some evidence first or you know, have you know, some sort of proof before we do anything that would essentially, mm -hmm. quote unquote, help you by lifting the sanctions. So, and that's what a lot of Republicans and even some Democrats are saying in Congress right now is who are you know, really wary of the deal. Mm -hmm. They want to try and make sure that anything that's going on, uh, they have some sort of voice in so they can give their opinion, counteract mm -hmm. uh, whatever that's going on there. Uh, yeah, and they're going to need it because Congress is the only one who can permanently remove the sanctions. Exactly. Yeah. Obama can only move some of, some of them on his own. Mm -hmm. So this isn't something that he can just wave an executive order over. This yeah. is something that they're going to need to work together on. So mm -hmm. um, I think they need to be in constant communication and also with the the commit the committee for um, this. That also needs to be like in you know in proposal with the Congress. So. All right. Now, Paige, moving on to you. From an environmental uh, standpoint, I myself, I'm a big Leave No Trace trainer, certified and whatnot. I don't like seeing a lot of damage done to the ecosystem and the environment. Paige, do you think there is going to be a large environmental impact that's going to be left from the uranium that's going on, whether it is for the nuclear power plants that they say they have, or it's going to be the nuclear uh, missiles, per se? Yeah, I mean... Uranium is very harmful, and it's very destructive not only to the environment, but if it something would malfunction with it, um, that's very that's a danger to the people around the plant. Mm -hmm. um, in the U.S., we have very strong regulations over that, and um, that's that's a blessing of living here. But I'm not sure Iran. Um, I'm not sure what they have in place for that, but they could really do some harm to the, to their country with uranium, and um, I think that. I think that that might not be the first on their mind because anyone who's considering using uranium as a as a weapon um, is is already so far gone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So um, I think that the U.S. is very the U.S. is very um, like conscious of that, but I'm yeah. not sure how conscious um, Iran is. Okay. But um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I think that we really mm -hmm. need to stay on top of this as a, as Congress as a people because this could be very detrimental, if mm. in the wrong hands. I mentioned before with how the whole time I was saying, Iran says they've been making nuclear power plants, uh, in quotes, per se, because we don't actually know if that's what they're using the uranium for. Uh, Ryan, are we putting not enough faith in the believing that that's actually what the uranium is for, the power plants, and not for nuclear bombs or missiles like we're assuming that they're for? Are we not putting enough faith in them as a country? Well, the thing is, the, the, thing, uh, the thing with Iran is that the people, I think most Americans and the American government, they like the Iranian people. We okay. don't like the Iranian government. Okay. The Iranian government, obviously, we've had really bad ties with Iran mm -hmm. since the 1979 revolution. Hostages, takeover, death to Israel and America. I don't mm -hmm. really think that's a really good way to have a friendship with yeah, another country. Not at all. Um, that's, that's just a little hunch I have. So, obviously... Uh, a lot of people are saying that President Obama really wants to, uh, to do some sort of deal because he needs some foreign policy achievement during his term. Because before, a lot of people were saying, oh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be Iraq or it's going to be Afghanistan. But now with the rise of ISIS, now all the stuff about, oh, there's no more terrorism and threats, that's kind of gone out the window. So I think a lot of people are concerned because President Obama might be more um, ready to try and make a deal mm -hmm. and compromise a little too much. And that's why that we see all this hubbub going on of saying, of uh, you know, you know, we want obviously Iran if they need nuclear power to actually run their country efficiently. Mm -hmm. I don't think people are opposed to that. the The issue is how do we know for certain when they've you know they've been lenient to show mm -hmm. 
the uh, the UN, all of the different power plants in certain areas where they were, you know, uh, surveillance mm -hmm. shows that there's something going on there. How are we supposed to trust them if mm -hmm. they're not even going to be trusting with us? Or, you know, how are we supposed to trust them if they're saying we want to kill you? And it's kind of hard to try and make some sort of deal with mm -hmm. a country that kind of views uh, the other country like we that. We won't know any of this for certain until we send people to go actually check it out. And before then, we have to actually make a deal with Iran. So. Alrighty. Well, I guess we'll have to find out what happens. Yeah, we and, will. And uh, this should be another big topic that's going to happen in the next few months, just as uh, all these other topics. Just They seem to just keep going on and on and on. <laughs> but uh, coming up next, we're going to conclude with our final speed round, so stay tuned for that. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed, as our nation is, with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all, we approach re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. Welcome back to the Waynesburg Effect. Now for our final segment, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're each going to discuss something interesting that caught our eye in the news this week in a little Speed round. So we're going to start off with Paige. What do you got for us? Um, so Taco Bell has recently released a brand new breakfast menu. And this menu must be good because McDonald's is finding it as competition. So if you have recently received a Taco Bell breakfast, take your receipt for Taco Bell into McDonald's and they will give you a free Egg McMuffin. The campaign has gone viral and they're strongly trying to get their business back. So. If anyone's interested in some free food. Well, I would not eat breakfast at Taco Bell or <laughs> hey. McDonald's. Hey, that's, so that's I, a, but for but I think it's a good marketing tactic. Obviously, it's working because no, people are talking here. about it. That's the dumbest idea ever. No. Why offense. do you think so? Why do I think so? Well, I'm because tell McDonald's you. breakfast is horrible. No. Well, either way, I hate breakfast foods in general. I like scrambled eggs and like pancakes. But listen. The way people work is they're going to go to Taco Bell, they're going to go get those Cinnabon, the late breakfast things. They're going to get like their Taco Bell breakfast every morning no matter what. Then they're just going to go on their way after Taco Bell, they're going to go to that McDonald's down the street and cash in that free McMuffin or whatever. So they're going to get Taco Bell breakfast that they're paying for and then McDonald's breakfast for free. So it's like a two for one deal basically. You're, you're not wrong. I never thought I, of it that's that That's what I would do. But I don't eat breakfast. Talk so. about jeopardizing, <laughs> man. Well, I guess we're on this topic. Well, Sean, why don't you uh, let us uh, fill well, us in on what you're, what you're talking about this week? Well, so a lot of people don't know this kid by name, but his name is Sam Griner. And he is the internet sensation, often seen in memes on websites like Reddit or 9gag, the success kid meme. Well, his mother started a GoFundMe account for his father, who uh, slowly has kidney failure. So they started a GoFundMe account to raise upwards of $75,000 for a kidney transplant. So it's just pretty cool how this little kid, hey, he, he became internet famous overnight one night for the picture. And they're hopefully going to get money out of it to help his father who has a kidney problem. How much are they at so far? Do you I, know? I'm not sure. Hmm. GoFundMe. But hey, GoFundMe is doing a lot of good work though yeah, with different definitely. organizations. Definitely. So helping people get money and back on their feet. All right, well, I guess that's really good to see. Uh, I have something that's a little bit more serious, but still a little intriguing. Uh, Kanye West and the Kardashians are in the country of Armenia uh, for the past uh, week or so, uh, leading into next week. Uh, they're there because it's the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. And I believe the Kardashians, I think they're actually filming their show, right? They have a, sh mm -hmm. a TV show. I think they're filming the show actually while they're there. However, while doing that, they've gone to the memorial that's for the Armenian Genocide. Uh, their youngest daughter, or, the daughter or son? I'm, I don't follow I, pop I culture. Follow. I, One I of the kids, the... they just got uh, <laughs> baptized while they were there in Armenia, and I think they're going to be there on the 24th uh, for the actual 100th anniversary. Uh, I think Connie did a free concert in some square that people oh. showed up to. So uh, I'm not a huge fan. You know, I'm sure everyone watching at home, and you guys know I'm not the huge pop culture freak, but at least as long as they don't make fun More of themselves... Mind. Uh, I think it's good that they're bringing media attention to uh -huh. the genocide and mm -hmm. to the country of Armenia, which isn't really talked about too much. The way I look at it is it's a, it's a pretty dang big shame that the only reason that this is getting media attention is because the Kardashians and Kanye are there. You wouldn't be seeing this if it was just because of the event, the whole 100-year anniversary. 
Uh, not I a big actually Kanye did fan, see but... something in the news circuit this week yeah. about Armenia and regarding um, a senator. Okay. And I was actually going to send it to you, Ryan. I, I don't remember the details, but you are right. Um, this is the only reason it's getting um, media attention on this scope. But I just don't see how Kanye's music has any uh, ha and, any uh, relevance to Armenia or anything yeah. meaningful whatsoever. Yeah. Keep in mind <laughs> that the only reason the Kardashians are famous is because of Kim. So. Yeah. Alrighty, well, thank you guys for uh, letting us know what stories you thought were interesting this week. And thank all of you for watching The Waynesburg Effect, and we'll have to see you next time. I believe it'll be next year already. So have a great summer, everybody.